Hi, this is Jenna and I'm here today with a tutorial for loom knitted socks with a heel flap style heel and a German short row toe. Once you understand the basics of sock knitting, any technique can be used on any loom, so don't feel limited by the loom that you have. Here is an illustration of sock anatomy as I will be using these terms when referring to parts of my sock. Today I will be using a 3 8 inch 40 peg loom, worsted weight yarn, a loom hook, scissors, stitch holders, stitch markers, double pointed needles, a darning needle, a crochet hook, and a row counter. I will start my sock with a slip knot on peg number one. Then I will use a double E wrap cast on. Wrap the peg starting from the inside and around twice. Bring the bottom loop up over the top loop and continue around. For the cuff, I will use a knit to purl to ribbing pattern. The knit stitch. Place the yarn on the top, bring the bottom loop up and over. I am doing a flat knit stitch as I prefer a tighter fabric for my socks. Purl stitch. Place the yarn on the bottom, pull a loop up through the original stitch, remove the original stitch from the peg and replace it with the new loop. Once again, place the yarn on the bottom, pull a loop up through the original stitch, remove the original stitch from the peg and replace it with the new loop. Continue a knit two, purl two pattern around for 15 to 20 rows. I chose to do 15 rows. Moving on to the leg, you may choose to do any pattern and any length for your leg. I chose to do a rib pattern with the center cable detail in the front and a plain stitch back for 30 rows. Note that I did have to shift my starting point over one peg to center my pattern. Now for the heel. I will be doing a heel flap gusset style heel. I knit this style of heel on more than the usual number of stitches that you would use for short roll heels. I feel like it gives me a little bit more room and is more comfortable for me. Here is how I determine how many stitches to use. The math. Start by dividing the number of pegs on your loom in half, and then add two to six stitches depending on the loom gauge. Here are some samples. A one quarter inch gauge loom, I add six. So for a 52 peg loom divided in half is 26 plus the six extra stitches equals 32 stitches. A 56 peg loom divided in half is 28, plus the 6 additional stitches equals 34. On a 3 8 inch gauge loom, add 4. 36 pegs divided in half is 18, plus 4 stitches equals a total of 22. A 40 peg loom divided in half is 20, plus 4 stitches for a total of 24. On a 5 8 inch or 1 half inch gauge, I add 2. So a 24 or 25 peg loom divided in half is 12 plus 2 equals 14 stitches. This sock is being made on a 3 8 inch 40 peg loom. So one half of the 40 is 20 stitches plus an extra 4. So I will use 24 stitches for my heel. I use stitch markers on either side of my 24 heel stitches to help me remember my starting and ending points. Next, we need to figure out the heel turn width. I find it helpful to have a cardboard cutout of my foot for sizing. In this case, I decided to go with eight stitches. So, of my 24 heel stitches, I will use eight for the center heel turn and eight on each side for gusset stitches, totaling 16 gusset stitches. The number of gusset stitches is equal to the number of rows for the heel flap. So I knit 16 rows on the 24 stitches for the heel flap. I will begin flat knitting starting on the left, knitting all 24 stitches until I reach my stitch marker on the right. When knitting the heel flap, you will slip or skip the first stitch at the beginning of each row. To demonstrate, after reaching the end, I don't knit that first stitch again. After I turn, I will just knit the second stitch, moving towards the other end. 
When you reach the other side, just turn, move on to the second stitch, and repeat. So slipping that first stitch gives me just one loop every two rows. For this sock, slipping the end stitch will give me 8 gusset stitches instead of 16. Having 16 rows of length for my heel flap makes it much more comfortable than only having 8. To begin the heel turn, knit the number of gusset stitches plus 1. In my case, 8 plus 1 is 9. Demonstrating on one side only, with a stitch holder, pick up the 8 gusset stitches, moving from the outer edge in towards the center. I work from the inside of the loom and use my thumb to hold the stitches on the stitch holder. Leave the eight heel turn stitches in the center and then with another stitch holder, pick up the remaining eight gusset stitches. Again, working from the outside towards the center. Make sure to secure the stitch holder when finished. Your heel will now look like this with both sides picked up. Now knit from left to right across the eight heel turn stitches. Put one stitch from the right stitch holder onto the last peg that was worked. Wrap your yarn around the end and knit both bottom loops over. Rewrap around the end and knit that loop off. So that last stitch will be knit a total of three times before you move on. Once when you knit across the row, once after the stitch has been moved from the stitch holder, and once as the beginning stitch for the next row. Knit back across to the other side and repeat. Continue back and forth until all the stitches from the stitch holders have been knit into the heel turn. Now we need to reattach the gusset stitches to begin knitting the foot. Going through both loops, attach the gusset stitches back onto the pegs. Putting both loops back on creates a flatter seam. I use a crochet hook for this process as a blencher tip seems to make it a bit easier for me. After all the stitches are back on the loom, pick up the top rung between the gusset and heel turn and attach it to the last peg of the heel turn. I am now ready to start the foot section. My preferred length is 55 rows for the foot for a size 9.5 shoe. Moving on to the toe. I will be doing a German short row style toe. For the math, one half of the pegs divided by three. For this sock, a 40 peg loom divided in half is 20. 20 divided by three is 6.6. .6. For a rounder toe, I will round down from 6.6 .6 to 6, so 6 for each side, leaving 8 for the center. For a pointier toe, you could round up from 6.6 .6 to 7, so 7 for each side, leaving 6 for the center. I use stitch markers to mark off my toe section. Knit across the toe section to begin the short row turns on the right. After knitting the last toe stitch, pull the yarn around the end to the front snugly to turn the stitch, and then knit the next stitch to the left. Continue knitting until you reach the end of the row. Knit the last stitch, pull the yarn around the end to the front snugly to turn the stitch, and knit the next stitch. Repeat this process, making each row one stitch shorter than the last row. 
thus short rowing. To further explain short rows, knit up to the stitch prior to the last one that was turned, and turn on that stitch. This makes each row one stitch shorter. The short row turns will finish up on the left, so the next time I knit to the right, I will begin lengthening the short rows one at a time. To do this, simply knit the turn stitch by pulling both loops up and over, and then change directions. Repeat back and forth until all of the turn stitches are knit back in. Note that the stitches that have been turned should be snug, so it may take a bit to knit them off. I am now ready to take the stitches off of the loom and Kitchener stitch the toe shut. Working from the inside of the loom, use a stitch holder to remove the stitches starting with the last peg, in my case number 40. Pick up the right leg of the stitch and remove half of the stitches. Using another stitch holder, continue around the loom working towards peg number 1, slipping the other half of the stitches off. Now transfer these stitches onto double pointed needles. Make sure that the right leg of the stitch is on the front of the needle so that your stitches will lie flat when sewn together. Also note here that your working yarn will be coming from the back needle. I am now ready to Kitchener stitch the seam. As a reminder, for knit stitch, the needle goes from left to right. On a purl stitch, the needle goes from the right to the left. The Kitchener stitch setup. Purl in front, leave on the needle, knit in back, leave on the needle. So for our setup, we're going to purl on the front needle and leave that stitch on. So move from right to left, leave that stitch on the needle. Moving to the back needle, we're going to knit. So from left to right, we're also going to leave that stitch on the needle. Then we will knit in the front take off, purl in the front, leave on. So moving left to right, knit stitch on the front, take that stitch off the needle. Right to left, we're going to purl in the front and leave that stitch on the needle. Moving to the back needle, we're going to purl in the back, take off, knit in the back, leave on. Start with purl, right to left, take the stitch off the needle, then we're going to knit, so left to right, leave that stitch on the needle. We're going to continue the sequence until we finish taking all of the stitches off the needles. Now all we need to do is weave in our ends. Repeat the entire process and you'll have a finished pair. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you. Thank you.